Welcome to the Emmanuel's Faith Center broadcast with Pastor Wayne Johnson. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and the Bible said, addeth no what? Sorrow. It didn't say blessings with an I-N-G-S on it. It said the blessing. So when I understand what the blessing is, it'll cause supernatural increase and in wealth to come into my hands, glory to God. Our church is located at 9501 Highway 97, Walnut Hill, Florida. We invite you to stay tuned. Hallelujah. For the it's word coming of God. through the, the, the wealth supply that God has for in his kingdom. Let's see, understanding that God is God, regardless of where you are in life. It ain't gonna always have a whole bunch of folks supporting you. It ain't gonna be that it ain't, it ain't good on. But you gotta understand, God will never change. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. And I was talking to somebody, you know, like yesterday. What, what, what were y'all doing yesterday? Between yesterday and today, can you distinguish the difference in your facial uh, oldness in, in a 24-hour period? You can't. Because you, it's so small, it's so minute. And that's what I'm trying to tell people, you know. God said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But he don't never change. So if I can't distinguish a change in my body and my life and my facial expression and my growth or getting older, 24 hours older than what I was yesterday, you know, it's so minute I can't even hardly distinguish it, can I? Hallelujah. But then if God is the same today, yesterday, and forever, that ought to give me a little bit of hope. Glory be to God. Do you feel me this morning? So I just want to let you know this morning, you know, regardless of where you are and what you're going through, don't lose sight of who you are. You're a spirit-filled believer. You've been born again. You've been born again. Hallelujah. I, I, I love Korobosi. Y'all, do, do you feel me this morning? <laughs> See, just because you're going through, that don't mean God is against you. That don't mean that God is, 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 is bringing this trouble in your life. Glory to God. I mean, because he said he tempts no man or woman with trouble. So trouble comes when we draw drawn away of our own lust and entice, and the devil entices us into something. Then we step off over in here, and we just got to hallelujah, glory to God. God tempts no man with evil. So once I understand that, he ain't tempting me with evil, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. So when I understand that, I just begin to walk in the counsel of his holy and righteous word. God ain't against me. He's for me. So if trouble is in my life, man, hallelujah, I know God going to bring me out because he done already told me he's for me and not against me. Amen. Glory to God. He went to the cross and, and, and shed his blood again. And just because folks ain't with me don't mean that God, is, hallelujah, do you feel me, baby? Amen. So called over. You got to constantly understand that. Like the woman right here in 2 Kings, hallelujah, Elijah. Go back to the first verse. Let me, let me talk about that. See, because sometimes we're looking at our situation and our circumstance. Go back to the first verse in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. And sometimes we're looking at things in life and we think God is, 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 is against us. But I want to let you know that ain't so. When you understand that, just because you're going through don't mean Somebody done walked away or something, then somebody, you know, you got to keep on trusting God, man. You got to keep on holding on to his unchanging hand. Let me tell you something, because in your troubled times, determine your altitude in good times, glory to God. Because if you can weather the storm and stand the persecution and stand all this opposition that comes through you, glory to God, you're going to be all right, because why, you're stronger than what you think, glory be to God. Now, here go a woman right here. Her husband was a man of God, and listen what he said. He said, now the wife of one of the sons of the prophet cried to Elijah, the second one, not Elijah, Elijah. Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditors have come to take my two children, to be what? Slave. Now, this is a second voice that God spoke in his word that I see. Two, two, two things. He said, he said, Rekurabasi. When you find a truth in God's word, he said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses and let it be established. Now, she said, my servant, your servant, my husband is dead. That's what he told Elijah, right? So what she's saying is, he said, go to verse, go to the next verse, let me show you. Go to verse 2. He said, go to verse 2. He said, and Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, 
what have you in the house? And she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jaw of oil. Now, she said, your servant, and a ho- your, your, my husband, your servant, is dead. Now, why would she bring up her husband and telling Elijah about his, but he's his servant? At least she must know something in relationship to what and how to approach the man of God and tell him, my husband, your servant, is dead, and the creditors have come to take my what two sons and put them into slavery, glory to God. She knows something because, oh, you, you don't hit me because she was married to a man of God, and he's dead. And so she knows something about how to bring her petition before the man of God, which was, is connected with God. Hallelujah. When you understand how to connect with the anointing and bring things to pass in your life. Now, this is a troubled time in her life. Her husband already gone, dead. Hallelujah, the breadwinner is gone. Lord, you don't hear me this morning. And now the creditors are coming to take her two children away. You think you're in a bad state, but look here, that's pretty bad, ain't it? Lord, that <laughs> Yes, Lord. And, 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 so, and so she goes to what? She goes to the man of God. And she brings her case before the man of God. Your servant, my husband, is now dead, and the creditors are coming to take my last two seed, glory to God. My breadwinner is gone, and I'm, I'm at the point of, I don't know, I'm losing and breaking off. You know, and I don't know what to do, but I know I need to come to the man of God and bring my petition before, because God, the only one can help me now, glory to God. Do you feel me? See, sometimes in your life, you done tried this and you done tried that, but you need to bring your petition before God, before the throne room of God, and go to the man of God and say, Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. I come before you, hallelujah. This is my petition. This is where I am, hallelujah. When we get real with God, God get real with us. And the servant, he don't talk about a problem, does he? But he asks her a question. And what he said, he said, Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for you? I hear your problem, but tell me what you want me to do for you. Tell me what you want. What shall I do? Tell me. Then he said, what have you in, in the house? And she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a what? A jaw of all. You can get down to your, to your last. <laughs> all you got is joy. Now, creditors come to take my two children. All I got is a joy. Or the prophet, I'm telling him about my problem. He asked me about a joy. What you got in the house? You know what I'm saying? But then, too, again, God knows how to get you out of trouble. He's just asking you a question. Tell me what you want me to do. Tell me what you want me to do. Lord, I want you to bless me. I want you to increase. I want you to let me draw, pull me closer to you. See, cause, see, 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 sometimes we think it's the other person, but most times it's me that needs fixing. Or do you feel me? Glory to God. Because, see, when I get fixed, my search of Eroikitoroborobaka. Do you understand me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, we always point the finger over there. You know, we keep forgetting three or four and point it back at her, you know. Because when I ever went through trouble, I always understood it was me. If God fixed me, my problem is fixed. Because then when I'm fixed, I'm going to obey the word. Glory to God. Do what God said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so when my trouble comes to turn me from what seeing how big God is in my life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go to verse 3. Hallelujah. And so we see she got a problem. And we all have problems, right? Man, I'm trying to tell you, listen, listen to what that. And, and, and then he said, go outside and borrow vessels from all of your neighbors, empty vessels, and what? Not too few. Or not a few. And sometimes God give us instructions on what to do and how to go about and what to do and how to go from one place to another. And if you obey him, now, 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 we, 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 we we're going to see where she obeyed him, but she wished she had a did a little bit more, glory to God, when she had the time and the moment and the one that was open, glory to God. Now, go to verse 4, and let's see what they keep telling my heart. We're going to see what happened here, glory to God. 
We got problems. We got trouble. But see, it's an anointing that's available to the saints of God that's able to bring you out and do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ever ask or think in your life. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. Now, she got direction from the prophet on what to do. Trouble is in my house. The breadwinner is gone. The creditors are coming. Glory to God. You know, they, the creditors never stop coming. They, they call you, knock, they, whatever. Glory to God. And they want my two sons to put them in the slave because they, you know what I'm saying. And I got a problem, so I went to the man of God. Because he's your servant, and he's my husband. Glory to God. Tell me what to do. I need a miracle. They coming. They didn't say when they was coming, but they must be pretty close. And then he told the woman what to do. Go tell your sons to borrow all the vessels. Lord, have mercy. see, in your obedience, it's the key that unlocks the door to your success sometimes. Simply, just sometimes simply obeying the voice of God, hallelujah, will cause you to triumph in the parent. And, and, and when the enemy is trying to overrun your house, glory to God, or trying to overrun your business, or trying to overrun your job, or trying to overrun you in any area of life, you still have the victory because why? You are known it. But sometimes you don't realize you are known it because you're so caught up in your trouble, you can't see the blessing of God. You see your trouble bigger than God. Yeah, hallelujah, glory to God. But I come to tell you, it's not so, hallelujah. When you when you do like the prodigal son, you got to come to yourself sometime in the midst of your trouble. <laughs> you don't hear me. <laughs> you got to come to yourself, glory to God. When you're in the hog pen, it seems like you done went low as you can go. And you just got to realize who you are. I'm a child, I'm a servant of the king. And what did the prodigal say? He said, my father has high servant that's doing and living better than me. I'm going to go back home. Many a time I had to come to myself when trouble, when I'm facing trouble in, in, in circumstances and situations, hallelujah, that I don't know what to do, glory to God. And when I come to myself and realize I am a son, I'm a mature son of God, washed and born again, spirit-filled believer, knowing that God has given me the victory. He didn't come to defeat me. He came to help me, glory to God. Sometimes we get the misconception that God come to defeat us, glory to God. God never comes to defeat me. I was in my worst defeated state when I wasn't saved, glory to God. Now, why would, mm, Lord have mercy, why would he wash me, clean me up, put me in the kingdom, and then take me out? You don't hear me. He don't operate like that, baby. Let me tell you what. This is what he does, glory to God. Go to verse 5. Because some of us, been, we, we, we believe the lie of the devil. We think he's more powerful than God. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons, and as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. A, a miraculous miracle. She began to pour out and all went out of the vessels and all the vessels started to fill up, glory to God. That's why God asked you, what is in your house? What do you have to give to God to work with? And sometimes we don't think we have nothing, but we got something in the house of value. Glory to God. Go to the next verse. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. And so when the vessels were full, she said to her sons, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped what flowed. You never will walk where you need to walk. Long as you keep seeing your problem bigger than what God can do in your life. Let me tell you something. You got to come to yourself and say, God, you didn't bring me this far for me to fall. See, because I had to do that same thing in my life. Lord, you, when you, every situation, every circumstance that we come up against, God's already knew it before the foundation of the world. Do you feel me? So if God is big in my life, why am I making him small when trouble comes my way? Lord have mercy. God can handle anything that I'm facing. But I got to get up and release my faith and know what he said that he would do in my life. Regardless of who coming against me. What did he say? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Why is it that I'm thinking that I can't do nothing when there's trouble coming against me? Man, I went down there, I had to do some, some I had to come to myself several times. Lord, have mercy. But I went, a tall undertaking, but let me tell you something. God never would have put me in that situation if he wasn't going to bless me. It's no trouble that's coming to your life that you don't have the power and the victory over, glory to God. See, because you lost sight of who God is, and sometimes when I went down there and I was going through, I, 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 you know, I never lost sight, but I, I, I lost 
who I was in Christ Jesus. I'm connected with the Almighty, so there's no power greater than the power that, 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 that's just coming against me, glory to God. Because the greater power is on my side rather than what's coming against me. And I can turn it around in the name of Jesus, glory to God. So when I constantly kept feeding on the word and kept pressing play and kept hearing what thus said the Lord and, and the trouble and the, and the things that emotionally were coming against me, I, look, I had to bridle and control my emotion because they were the catalyst or the problem that was, was taking me from the hand of God. And once I began to understand that God wanted to bless me and wanted to empower me, he was asking me, is there any faith in your house? Glory to God. Now, do you feel me? Glory to God. Sometimes you may not have no, no little boy, but you got some faith. Glory to God. You can believe God. Hallelujah. Faith is the currency that unlocks the door in this kingdom of God. Lord, let me tell you something, church. The enemy can't pull that from you. The Bible says every man and every woman has a measure of faith. Use your measure of faith. Use what God has given you. He's given you a measure. Use it. Glory to God. In Luke 24, glory to God. Let me finish here. I'm turning to Luke 24 because I want to show you something. See, when he opens your understanding to his word. Amen. Praise God. And when the vessel was full, she said to her sons, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then they all stopped flowing. Go to verse 7. Because I want to show you something this morning. And she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons can live on the rest. Amen. Do you believe what you read this morning? Play, give, give me a little music and a little light music, something, 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 something. A little something, something, something this morning. Because why? I, I just want to let you know. God don't put these stories in the Bible for nothing. These are examples of faith and, and, and confidence and trust. If when I stop crying enough to see what God could do in my life, let me tell you, I come to myself, I said, man, wait, wait a minute now. He told me, they should be afraid of me instead of me being afraid of them. Do you feel me? And so when I start to understand, because why? I just want to let you know, God don't put these stories in the Bible for nothing. These are examples of faith and, and, and confidence and trust. If when I stop crying enough to see what God could do in my life, let me tell you, I come to myself, I said, man, wait a minute now. He told me, they should be afraid of me instead of me being afraid of them. Do you feel me? And so when I start to understand that God said, if he did it back in the Old Testament, that was yesterday, wasn't it? And today, and right now, and forever, and in the future. So yesterday, tomorrow is the future. So if he did it yesterday, and I can't distinguish Oh, you, ooh, Lord have mercy. And I can't even tell whether I growed or moved an inch or, or centimeter or whatever from yesterday to the day. And God is saying, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. What am I trying to tell you this morning? It's what you think about God and where you are that will cause you to triumph when trouble comes on your door. And see, the depth of the word, the amount of word that you have in you when trouble comes, it determines how quickly you get out of where you are. Oh, you didn't hear me. I'm going to say that one again. See, the depth of the word when trouble comes knocking on your door determines how quickly you come out of your trouble. Glory to God. See, cause, see you have to hear because you are hearing anyway whether you realize it or not. You're hearing your problem speak to you. Glory to God. And it speaks, um, and it has no mercy on you. It comes to kill and destroy you, glory to God. Hallelujah. And the voice of your pain adds to the fuel of the fire that you're going through, glory to God. Because now you're consumed, oh, you're like a burning man. You're totally consumed in the fire that you're facing, glory to God. And everywhere you turn, you see nothing but fire. But when you come to yourself and realize 
I'm not the old man I used to be. I'm not the old woman I used to be. I'm born again. I'm a spirit-filled believer, glory to God. I've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. The crimson blood of Jesus Christ. I'm washed and made whole. I'm new in the kingdom of God. All things have become new to me. There's no weapon formed against me that shall what? Prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment is already condemned. When will I believe God and stop believing the lie of my emotions and my feelings? I had to come to myself and say, emotions, you have lied to me long enough. I'm going to believe the truth rather than what I perceive to be true. Glory to God. I'm going to stand on Jesus. Glory to God. In the midst of my difficulty, in the midst of the people that's coming against me, in the midst of the criticism, in the midst of the agony and the pain, glory to God, because you come to build me up, not to tear me down, glory to God. Even though this trouble is here, hallelujah, it didn't come from God. God's going to use it as a stepping stone for me to step out of my pain, to step out of my trouble, to step out of my pit, glory to God. Even though Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit, but he, mm, you don't hear me, he, mm, my God, have mercy to Jesus. Every time I've been in a pit, you got to use your pit. as the stepping stone to step out of you where you are in order to get to the next level in God. You got to learn how to be mature when trouble comes your way. Go get you some books on leadership and you're going to see trouble comes when you are in leadership. If you're trying to do anything, trouble going to come, glory to God. But how you handle problems, how you handle circumstance and opposition and situation determines your altitude in life, glory to God. Stop, hallelujah, stop, stop it now. You got to stop your pity party. Wash your face and wash your hands and wash your feet and stand up and be the man and the woman of God that God called you to be in this troubled times in your life. Glory to God. See, because trouble ain't going to stop coming. People ain't going to stop talking. Glory to God. But you can be stronger tomorrow than you are today. Glory to God. When you learn who you are. And what God has said rather than what people say, glory to God. Hallelujah. They can name you this and name you that, but you got to realize that don't apply to me. I've been born again. I'm the king's kid. I have a new name written in there. You don't hear me. I'm a different man or woman. I'm not the same man that I used to be, glory to God. I'm anointed and appointed for such a time and a season as this. And I'm not going to give you the, the ability to hold me captive by what you think about me, glory to God. Because it don't mount to a hill of being, glory to be to God. Do you feel me this morning? When I understand and I know that what God said is bigger than what you said, I'm going to walk in the wisdom and the counsel of God. Because why? I know God is with me. And long as he's with me, I'm all right. Amen, praise God. Do you feel me this morning, baby? I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who has what? Strengthened me. I didn't read now, I didn't, I didn't read in there anywhere where he come to what? Not strengthen me. He come to increase me. He come to strengthen me. He come to give me strength when I'm weak and I'm torn down. He come to build me up. He come to encourage me. He come to give me gold and silver when I don't even have any glory to God. So why am I listening at the world judge me and stamp and put something on me rather than being in what God called me to be? You mighty man of valor. And what did Gideon say? Father, I'm the least in my father's house. <laughs> the Midianites are coming. They took all my stuff. They're taking everything from me. I can't do that. And the angel said, when he saw him, he knew his situation already, glory to God. So God knows where we are. That's what he had told me many a time. He said, you mighty man of valor. Step out and do what I call you to do. I never would push you out there in the water if you couldn't swim. You don't hear me. Y'all didn't get that, did you? You don't, you don't get that glory to God. You didn't get that, did you? You didn't hear me this morning. See, cause, see, see, your mentality is that you can't do nothing. You can't go nowhere. Hallelujah. Unless somebody go with you. Glory to God. But I serve the the almighty God. And sometimes you got to take a drink of the, of the water of life. 
See, because the well you've been drinking from, it got you in the situation that you're in now. You're drinking from the wrong well. Because what you're drinking from the well, I see it in your life. I see it on your face. I see that it has contaminated your thinking in relationship to where you are and what God has called you. You are, you are the anointed one. You have been born again by the spirit and by the water. God didn't bring you this far to drop you off and leave you. He ain't like men. So because you drank from the wrong fountain, you see yourself, oh, Jesus, you see yourself in the wrong, oh, Lord God Almighty. God said, I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In Colossians, uh, in Colossians chapter 1, who has delivered me from the power of darkness and has translated me from the, who has delivered me from the power of darkness and has translated me into the kingdom of his, his son. So if God has already moved me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, that means he ain't bringing no darkness in my life. So why am I thinking like an unsaved woman and an unsaved man? I need to believe what the book said, glory to God. Because when you drink from the wrong fountain, you see yourself mm, as less than rather than what greater than. So change fountains and go over here and drink from the what? Drink the water that comes from the river of life. And you'll you, 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 you receive life. I can give you life, but you got to receive life. What you project to be truth is truth to you. I can give you truth for the beginning of Rebecca. But if you keep believing the lie that comes from the fountain of death, you will always receive death and you never think that you can get out because you'll think your enemy is greater than you. When God gave the children of Israel the promise, go into the land, I've given you the land. But then, hallelujah, what did they do? They, they formed a committee, didn't they? To verify, confirm what God has said. Because they didn't believe the prophet. They didn't believe the man of God. They said we're going to get 12 people, a man from each tribe, and go in and spy the land out. You got to trust his word. You got to trust him when you can't trust yourself. And that's sometimes we trust in ourselves more than we trust in God's word. Don't you know yourself and lied to you more than 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 more times in a minute? And I told you all kind of lie, got you in trouble right now. If you stop drinking from that well and start drinking from the well that Jesus said, it'll change you. And you'll start projecting the image that God said is available to his children. I'm for you, I'm not against you. This trouble may be here, but it didn't come from me. Stop crediting, stop giving, stop, stop, stop attaching that all to God. God didn't bring that. This has been the Emmanuel's Faith Center broadcast with Pastor Wayne Johnson. If this broadcast was a blessing to you, we would like for you to partner with us. You can partner with us with the monthly seed of $25. We are located at 9501 Highway 97, Walnut Hill, Florida. For this and other teachings by Pastor Johnson, please visit our website at www.efcenter.org. Tune in next week for another exciting time in the Word of God. And may God continue to richly bless your lives is our prayer.